Hey guys, today I'll show you an adventure horror TV series named Survival Game Igra Navijivani Season 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama takes place a year after the tragic death of the participants in the previous survival show. Ten individuals, each wearing headgear marked with a number, arriving at a deserted island by speedboat. They were there to participate in a grand reality show competition, where the winner would be awarded one million euros. The show had already garnered widespread attention domestically due to a tragic accident in the previous season, where almost all of the participants and crew members perished in the accidents. Among the ten participants this time, almost half were relatives of the deceased from the previous season. They hoped to continue the unfinished dreams of their loved ones. However, nobody could have anticipated what would happen on the first day of filming. A large group of fully armed soldiers stormed the filming camp, surrounding not just the crew, but also the participants. The person leading this surprise operation was none other than Nikolai, the winner of last season's survival game. At a glance, he recognized the sister of his deceased friend Victoria, but he chose not to greet her. His thoughts went back to the time shortly after the last game ended. It turned out he had uploaded all the horrifying experiences of the participants and the scheming plots of the show organizer online. But unfortunately, due to lack of evidence, it didn't cause any public outrage. Luckily, a high-ranking prosecutor, Levon, personally met with him. Levon was the father of the deceased participant, Surin, and he didn't believe his son could have died so easily so he wanted to seek Nikolai's help to find his missing son, alive or dead. Coupling this with the many details revealed by Nikolai, he dispatched his team to arrest all the crew members of the new show in one swoop, and they catched Igor, the same host of the show. Levon immediately accused Igor of murder, hoping he would confess to the mastermind behind the scenes. But Igor remained calm, claiming he was merely the host, and any issues should be directed to the show organizers. Igor only started to panic when Nikolai walked out with a gloomy face. Levon took advantage of the situation, stating that his men controlled the island and had blocked all mobile signals. No news could get out to the outside world. Igor, at a loss for words, finally said that he was just a pawn being manipulated. He then became uncooperative, refusing to disclose any further information. Filled with rage, Nikolai punched him, but it changed nothing. Prosecutor Levon stood up in anger and announced that he would bring Igor back to Moscow for further investigation. Nikolai was concerned. He knew the show organizers had significant backing and would try to rescue their people. But Levon was prepared for this. He planned to use his connections to negotiate with them, buying enough time until the mastermind was caught. At this moment, Levon's deputy reported that there were too many crew members for one transport plane. So Levon decided he would take Igor and the participants back to Moscow first, and the remaining soldiers and crew members would take the next plane. Nikolai, watching the participants through a screen, was reminded of his own experiences from the previous season. He surmised he had been under constant surveillance, too. It seemed like a new cycle was beginning. The new participants, completely bewildered, were unsure of what was happening. Some complained about their human rights being violated violated while others suspected this was a game designed by the production team. It wasn't until they were all on a plane back to Moscow that they were truly confused. Levon asked Nikolai to say something to ease their fears, since they would need to be questioned upon their return. After some thought, Nikolai shared his experience from the last survival game. He couldn't bear to see each participant die brutally, some of whom were relatives of those present. He vowed to bring everyone back safely. But just as he finished speaking, the plane started to shake violently. An urgent message from the pilot came over the intercom, instructing everyone to fasten their seatbelts. Soon after, Levon came out of the cockpit and informed Nikolai that one of the plane's engines had failed. They had to make an emergency landing at the nearest airport. Igor, who was seated in the front row, made a ghostly face. Nikolai could only sense a familiar danger looming. Fortunately, the plane managed to land safely at an airport in a neighboring country. Levon had previously contacted local government departments to prevent the participants from being left homeless. However, according to local laws, Levon and his armed men had to surrender their weapons. Levon didn't treat it as a real trouble, and even assured everyone that they would be taken back to Moscow the following morning. For the next half a month, they would all be key witnesses under the protection of the police. When some people proposed getting their phones back to reassure their families, Levon immediately refused. He believed that cutting off contact with the outside world was the best way to protect everyone. One middle-aged man didn't want his freedom restricted, but Levon's deputy put him back in his seat with a single punch. 
After that, everyone behaved. Under the protection of the police, the bus quickly left the airport and entered a desolate suburb. Only one tall building was still lit. The driver explained that it was a resort under construction, but the project had been halted by the government. About half an hour later, the participants finally checked into a luxury hotel. Only then did Nikolai have a chance to find Victoria's sister, Olga. He was still filled with guilt and believed he should have died in the game. Now, what he wanted most was to punish the showrunners and hoped that Olga could step forward to help him because the other participants were basically on the sidelines. After learning of her sister's death, Olga had no energy to care about anything else. Nikolai had no choice but to focus on the host, Igor. To his surprise, the interrogation process went smoother than expected. It turned out that Igor had a rare disease that required him to inject medicine every few days for relief. Levon used this as a threat and finally made Igor open his mouth and agree to cooperate to expose the truth. But then he added that even if he knew the truth, he couldn't change anything. Early the next morning, a local receptionist came to the hotel and told everyone that the plane to Moscow was ready and all they had to do was go to the airport. Everyone showed signs of relief. The experiences of the past few days made them feel like they were cattle being transported around. However, when they were about to reach their destination, they were blocked by a group of protesting workers. The receptionist explained that they were employees of a solar power plant. Their boss had shut down the factory, so they took to the streets to protest. He then found the foreman and warned him that the people in the car were celebrities, and the consequences would be severe if they missed their flight. The foreman's eyes lit up when he heard the word celebrity. He immediately decided to take a look at the car and recognized Igor, the show host of the survival game, sitting in the front row. He excitedly invited Igor to visit the factory. The receptionist warned the foreman not to mess around, but he pulled out a gun. He just wanted Igor to speak up for the poor workers and let more people know about the greedy boss. As long as the video was uploaded to the internet, he would personally take everyone to the airport. Levon, who was in charge, looked at Nikolai and finally agreed to the foreman's request. The protesting workers quickly made way, and under the foreman's guidance, the bus slowly drove to the idle solar power plant. Levon and Nikolai exchanged glances in the vehicle, recalling Igor's revelations from the night before. He had claimed that the survival game was not yet over, and that the showrunners had devised a new game based on Levon and Nikolai's actions. On the way to the airport the next day, someone would attempt to take him away, just as he had suddenly separated from the participants at the start of the previous season. Nikolai doubted Igor's swift confession, but Igor suddenly stated they were both the victims. However, the unexpected event the next day made Levon and Nikolai believe what Igor had said last night. It was very likely that the protesting workers were arranged by the showrunners. Realizing that, Levon signaled his deputy to guard the door while he walked with the participants into the interior of the factory. The behavior of the foreman was indeed very abnormal. He motioned for Levon to hand over his phone and facing the dark muzzle of a gun, Levon had no choice but to surrender the only phone among the participants. The foreman gestured for everyone to wait in the office while he took Igor to the next room to record a video. Igor suddenly got flustered and wanted to take Olga along to help with the filming. Levon wanted to follow but was stopped by the foreman. Nikolai looked at Olga in confusion, not understanding why Igor had called her out. Levon even suspected that Olga was in cahoots with the showrunners. At this moment, complaints from the participants echoed in the hall. They believed that Levon had lost control of the situation, but Levon was at a loss. In the end, out of desperation, he had to reveal his identity as a state prosecutor. The guard outside was actually taken aback by this and signaled that if he had any demands, he could talk to the foreman personally. The foreman was supervising Igor's video recording, and upon receiving the report from his man, he had to interrupt filming and ran over to meet Levon. Levon made his demand to retrieve his phone but was ruthlessly refused by the foreman. Levon was furious and headbutted the foreman, who unexpectedly got impaled on a nail and died on the spot. This caused chaos, and fellow participants quickly pulled Levon away. Olga and Igor learned of the situation from the walkie-talkie and escaped from the office while the guards ran to provide support. Nikolai and the remaining participants also noticed the abnormal situation. Nikolai kicked open the door and led everyone to run outside. 
No matter what happened outside, staying where they were would be tantamount to death. Olga knew a lot of insider information about the competition, so she questioned Igor if this was also part of the game. But Igor denied it, saying he didn't know what would happen next. But he was certain at one thing that they all had to leave here as soon as possible. However, the factory was enormous, with angry workers everywhere across its three floors, indicating that the participants had fallen into another life-or-death survival game. All factory workers swarmed in, initiating a crazed manhunt. Nikolai knew that there was no chance of explaining their situation, so he led the group to flee in all directions. In one of the workshops, they happened to meet up with Levon. Nikolai managed to fend off some of the pursuers. However, he discovered that Levon had been stabbed in the waist. Nikolai quickly started the coach bus they had arrived in. Once the injured Levon got on board, everyone urged Nikolai to drive away, but Nikolai hesitated. It turned out he was waiting for Olga and Igor who were running last. The moment the two jumped on the bus, a large group of crazed workers caught up. Nikolai floored the accelerator, driving straight through the factory's iron gate, finally escaping the chaotic place with everyone. However, they soon realized that the injured Levon had died. Everyone panicked, knowing that they would struggle in this unfamiliar place. Some suggested asking the police for help, but Nikolai refused, believing that the police would definitely side with the locals. Besides, there was a corpse in the car. He suggested going to an abandoned resort they had passed by the previous day, take a rest there, then decide on their next move. Once they confirmed the workers weren't pursuing them anymore, some started to vent their dissatisfaction. They blamed Nikolai for ending the show, which led them to this dire situation. Nikolai knew most participants still hadn't known the conspiracy of the showrunners. Now he had no time to explain. He just led everyone into the abandoned resort. After turning on the power switch, they found that although it was deserted, it was indeed a good place to take refuge. A young man volunteered to help. He and Nikolai buried Levon's body together. The young man wanted to know how his grandfather, Semyon, had died in the previous show. Nikolai's mind then flashed with the old man's face. He stated that how Semyon died wasn't important. However, he hoped that his grandson could be proud of him. When little Semyon left, Nikolai looked at Levon's tombstone. His suppressed emotions finally erupted. But Nikolai wasn't disheartened. At least the host of the show was still under control. Olga volunteered to stay and keep an eye on him. It turned out they knew each other. Olga had participated in the survival game two rounds ago, also hosted by Igor. Elena, the champion and a woman with glasses, also accompanied them. Later, Olga infiltrated Nikolai's team in the previous season and became a member of the production team, even being assigned as a team leader to ensure the progress of the show. The participants seemed to be ordinary people from all walks of life, but no one knew exactly how many identities they had. Igor was particularly interested in Olga's tattoo. She then revealed that after her father's death, the only thing left to her and her sister was a uniquely shaped pendant. To prevent the pendant from being lost, they had identical tattoos made based on the pendant's pattern. After sharing her secret, Olga took the chance to ask Igor why he was helping the production team do all these bad things. Unpredictably, Igor just smiled and did not answer her question. Not far away, in a corner, a YouTuber was busy with her phone when she was accidentally spotted by the passing little Semyon. He wondered if everyone's phone had been confiscated. The YouTuber explained that she had stolen it from the bus driver earlier. The commotion drew the attention of a man named Klim, who pretended to make a phone call. The YouTuber explained there was no signal here, they could only use it to access the internet. In the dead of night, Nikolai went to the place where the host was detained and quietly led him to a vacant room. Earlier, with Olga present, Nikolai couldn't voice his doubts, but now he said that he suspected that Levon had been set up by the show's crew. Even if Igor hadn't done the deed himself, he must have known. Little did he know, their every move was being monitored in a control room somewhere. The middle-aged man in front of the screen was Igri, the moderator behind the survival game. His aide continually reported that Nikolai's adrenaline was spiking, indicating that he was planning to kill. Then Igor's voice came over the screen, explaining that the show wouldn't deliberately kill anyone. They would only arrange for the participants to kill each other. Nikolai found this somewhat reasonable and loosened his grip on Igor. The aide reported again. Nikolai's adrenaline was subsiding. A female aide added that the YouTuber had gotten hold of a phone, but Igri remained unfazed, predicting a lively day ahead. It's now clear that the show organizer's reach was so extensive, they knew not only everything the participants did, but also their physical conditions. Early the next morning, Nikolai was awakened by a man in glasses named Edward, who gestured for him to be silent and gave him the phone. Nikolai was surprised. 
Edouard had always been prickly among the participants. Now, seeing his cautious demeanor, Nikolai realized his previous behavior must have been a facade. Besides, few people knew that Nikolai had a phone. It was Levon who had found it on the dead foreman and Nikolai took it when he buried Levon. Edward frantically typed on the phone, disabling an eavesdropping feature before speaking. He claimed to know everything about the showrunners. As it turned out, Edward was a hacker wanted by Interpol. One day, the show advisor found him and asked him to create a surveillance system. If he refused, she would turn him over to Interpol. He had to agree and built the most sophisticated surveillance system for the show. They could use any installed camera to monitor the participants' every move. Upon hearing this, Nikolai was furious, scolding him for the death of so many participants. Edouard didn't rebut him, but he hadn't known about the show's malicious intentions and now wanted to escape the show's control, hoping Nikolai would help him. Nikolai asked why he should trust him. Edouard revealed he had what Nikolai needed. He had backed up all surveillance videos on an independent server. He then entered a string of code on the phone and a video appeared on the screen. It was the scene of the previous participants arriving on the deserted island by helicopter. Tears streamed down Nikolai's face. This was the evidence he had been desperately seeking. By posting it online, he could expose the show's lie about the participants' plane crash. Edward hesitated, knowing it would provoke retaliation from the show, but he agreed to Nikolai's request. Suddenly, there was a noise from the hallway next door. Nikolai rushed to check and found their conversation had been overheard by a white-haired participant named Yana. Not far away, the YouTuber was scrolling through her phone and saw the video Edward had uploaded. So, she woke up the other companions one by one. This was shocking news. Seeing Masha, the kind girl who had been violated and burned to death in the previous show, the middle-aged woman couldn't help but sob. It turns out she was Masha's mother, Tamara. But the others didn't have time to grieve. This video was enough to prove that everything Nikolai said was true. They all went to the host to demand an explanation. Igor shrugged and blamed the production team, claiming himself a victim, which infuriated Klim. Suddenly, Olga drew a gun, claiming that Igor was their only contact with the showrunners. If anything happened to him, they wouldn't be able to find the organizer. The others became anxious and curious about where she got the gun, but Olga wouldn't explain that she had brought the gun from the solar factory. On the other side, Nikolai, who heard the commotion, came over in a hurry. He was on Olga's side, urging everyone not to create strife, which would fall right into the trap of the showrunners. He would drive into town to find the police, and if all went well, everyone could board a plane back to Moscow. After giving instructions to Klim, he set off with Edward and Yana. The three of them boarded a bus and were heading to the city center. However, when they passed an intersection, Nikolai suddenly stopped the vehicle. After confirming again with Edouard that the showrunners could see them through the camera, he pulled out the gun that Olga had handed over and forced Edouard to the middle of the road. He then shouted at the camera, saying that if the show organizer did not send someone over within an hour, he would shoot Edouard in the head. This turned out to be Nikolai's real plan. Regardless of whether Edouard was telling the truth, he was undoubtedly an important piece placed by the show. Nikolai wanted to meet the mastermind hidden in the shadows. However, he had underestimated the cold-bloodedness of Igri, who claimed that any member of the production team, including himself, was expendable. As the hour was about to pass, Nikolai was getting a bit impatient. He suddenly realized that the deceased Levon might have been killed by the mole, Edward. Because Levon was a powerful player, he could easily break free from the control of the show. Initially, Edward repeatedly denied his accusations, but when Nikolai began to count down, he finally collapsed and admitted it. Nikolai got extremely furious and, without hesitation, pulled the trigger. This move even caught the moderator off guard. Realizing Nikolai was out of control, Igri immediately issued instructions. It was time to have a talk with Nikolai and stop him from taking any more outrageous actions. Just then, a minion beside him reminded Igri that Nikolai's adrenaline was not high just now, which was far less than the value when he wanted to kill the host yesterday. Igri was taken aback, guessing that Nikolai might be numb. Indeed, Nikolai at that time didn't look like someone who had just killed a person. He planned to continue to the small town to contact the police, to see if he could send everyone back to Moscow. However, when about to enter the town, he was stopped by a checkpoint set up by the police, who asked him to show his driver's license and registration. Nikolai had none of these. As a result, he and Yana were taken into a temporary prison. After witnessing everything along the way, Yana had some understanding of the current situation. 
She felt that Nikolai's attempt to save everyone was almost impossible and might only make things worse. But Nikolai seemed confident. He was about to negotiate with the game organizers. Sure enough, before long, a guard let Nikolai out. But he had noticed that this was a trap set by the game organizers aiming to meet with him. Unexpectedly, the person sitting in front of Nikolai was the show advisor he had met a few times before, and standing beside her was Levon's deputy. Nikolai didn't say anything, only smiled. Now he knew why he hadn't seen the deputy and his bald head since the conflict at the factory. The advisor cut to the chase and asked Nikolai not to try to break the game rules anymore. Nikolai asked why he should listen to her. She replied that Nikolai's beloved woman, Tatiana, was still alive. She had given up her only parachute earlier and sacrificed herself to save Nikolai, but the show team had managed to save her. If Nikolai behaved, there would be a chance for him to see Tatiana again. Nikolai was infuriated and quickly reached for the fruit knife on the table, but he was stopped by the deputy. The show advisor had achieved her goal and signaled Nikolai could leave. At this point, Nikolai suddenly seemed calm, claiming that the showrunners were on the brink of disaster. All their actions appeared on the monitor in front of Igri. The deputy flexed his bald head before saying that Nikolai's adrenaline had just skyrocketed. Obviously, he really wanted to kill. But why was his adrenaline almost unchanged when he killed Edward earlier? This made Igri suspicious and wonder if there was a trick in it. At that moment, the female assistant discreetly glanced at Igri, her hands rapidly typing on the keyboard, erasing the surveillance at the crossroads. Edward, who had seemingly been shot and fallen to the ground, suddenly sat up and dove straight into a small sedan that had come to pick him up. It turns out this was all part of a fake death escape plan that Nikolai had set up for him. The scene flashes back to a few hours earlier. Although Nikolai was skeptical of Edward's words, he decided to take the risk and collaborate with him in order to bring down the mastermind. As long as he could help Edward escape from the control of the show, the latter would provide all the video footage of the gruesome deaths of the last season's participants. Both of them knew that the only way to escape from the show was to fake their deaths. Nikolai had no reason to kill Edward, but the man soon provided him with one. It turns out that as soon as the participants landed and entered the hotel, Levon obtained everyone's identity information and discovered Edward's fugitive status. If he wanted to, Edward could be arrested at any time. In order to protect his own freedom, Edward had no choice but to try and kill Levon. Despite being furious upon hearing this news, Nikolai staged the death scene at the crossroads. It's further revealed that Edward had been planning this for years, having already bribed the female assistant to erase the subsequent surveillance information. Nikolai had also secretly aligned himself with an ally, the sheriff of the seaside town who was searching for his missing daughter. It turned out that the sheriff was also a victim of the show. The showrunners had purposely kidnapped his daughter to cause conflict between him and the participants. The sheriff, knowing the truth, was unable to swallow this insult and decided to cooperate with Nikolai. After picking up Edward, he put electronic shackles on him to prevent him from escaping. Edward didn't have any intention of trickery. He immediately went to an internet cafe to prepare to copy all the show videos. However, due to the high level of encryption, he needed 24 hours to complete the task. During this time, the town sheriff would protect his personal safety. Everything was under control. No wonder Nikolai was so confident when facing the show advisor. Now, his only worry was the other participants left in the resort. On the other side, Igri picked up the phone and issued his new orders. The long waiting crew suddenly punched a woman's stomach. After whispering a few words, a local resident took the woman and got into a small sedan. Before long, they arrived at the resort where the participants were staying. The local resident claimed that his wife was forced to transport drugs, and the drug bag in her body burst, putting her life in danger at any time. Among the participants, there happened to be a medical doctor who didn't hesitate to help the woman. Olga hurriedly warned that this could be a trap set by the show, but the doctor didn't listen to Olga's advice. She brought the injured woman to the wooden table in the room, preparing to perform surgery on her. Everyone else expressed their support. No one wanted to see an innocent life pass away. But when the doctor finally removed the bag from the woman's body, the patient convulsed a few times and immediately stopped breathing. The local's face contorted, as if the doctor was the murderer of his wife. The doctor felt extremely guilty, but Olga, on the other hand, was observing coldly. She was certain that this was the typical plot to lead the participants into despair, causing them to emotionally collapse and start killing each other. 
Olga tried to comfort the doctor with this reasoning, but it had minimal effect. Just as the other participants were also expressing their condolences, a group of armed men suddenly walked into the resort again. All the participants couldn't help but shrink back. The boss signaled everyone to relax. They were just passing by to have a meal. But just as they sat down, one of the men grabbed the local who lost his wife, and the boss walked up and shot him in the head. It turns out he was the drug lord forcing the poor to smuggle drugs. Upon hearing that the woman had died, he immediately ordered all the women present to carry drugs with their bodies, as women would not arouse any suspicion when crossing the border. The celebrity Andre tried to protest, but only received a beating. These weaponless participants stood helplessly in front of the fully armed drug dealers. The few female participants could only walk into the room. The drug lord pulled out a basin covered with a plastic bag, instructing everyone to swallow 30 pills each. Olga picked up a glass of water and swallowed the pills in one gulp. She thought if it was real, they had no room for resistance. If it was a game set up by the show, even if they swallowed the pills, they would be safe because they wouldn't directly kill the participants. The doctor was the second to follow suit, then Tamara. The male participants outside the room could only wait for the results. Klim was somewhat observant, deducing that the drug lord must have been a soldier because he was a veteran himself. Just then, a henchman came to report that two women were not willing to cooperate, which infuriated the drug lord, so he ordered them to be killed. Veteran Klim hurriedly stepped forward, stating that he could persuade them. The drug lord, considering their shared military background, gave him 30 minutes. Klim quickly headed towards the house, passing by Olga who had already swallowed her pills. He went straight to the resisting YouTuber and the farm owner, saying that either they swallowed the pills or they would be killed instantly. By taking the pills, they had a slim chance of survival. The two women finally agreed and reluctantly lifted their water glasses. When everything was ready, the drug lord began to arrange a plan. They would cross the border under the guise of a travel agency. Although they had no passports, they would have a permit for international travel. Once they successfully crossed the border and removed the pills, they could safely return to Moscow. The participants didn't dare to refute and had to submit to the bandits' manipulation. Suddenly, a henchman came to report that one of the cars had broken down and would take an hour to repair. The drug lord decided to take the sexy women first, and the remaining smelly men would follow once the car was repaired. Olga looked around and sensed a plot once again, but now she was powerless to change anything. Sure enough, after the female participants left, the disguised boss ordered his companion to check the red car. As soon as the man approached the car, he shot his companion dead on the spot and then drove away. Klim and the others were completely baffled. They found the hidden guns and ran towards the door, but there was only a local resident, shivering. He said he and the dead man were just guides hired by the drug dealers. Klim confirmed he was telling the truth and let him leave with the body. From the red car came continuous screams. When they opened the trunk, it was the show host, Igor. His body was seeping blood, presumably hit by a stray bullet. By now, everyone was certain that the bandits were set up by the show. Otherwise, they wouldn't have taken the host away first. They wondered why the drug lord shot and injured someone. Was he brewing a bigger plot? If their guess was correct, then Olga and the others heading to the police station were bound to face an unexpected blow. On the other side, several minivans arrive at a border checkpoint. As per usual, they are subjected to a thorough inspection. However, the girls in the vehicles merely need to present their IDs at the pedestrian exit. Despite this, their faces are pale. Before their departure, they have swallowed large amounts of white powder wrapped in plastic. If discovered by the border patrol, it would likely result in their death. Olga remains calm, showing a pre-prepared exit permit. The officers scrutinize it. Although the document is valid, the girls cannot present their passports and must undergo further scrutiny. The drug lord watches from a distance, silently praying. Due to the sheer number of people crossing the border, the female participants wait until nightfall. Several hours pass without food or drink, and patience starts to wear thin. Olga timely reminds everyone that this could be a trap set by the show. No matter what happens next, everyone must remain calm. Before she finishes speaking, a security officer signals that it's their turn for scrutiny. The participants are given special attention and must pass through a corridor filled with drug-sniffing dogs. At the end of the corridor, several residents tremble with fear. An officer announces they must remove their clothing for inspection. Although disgruntled, the girls comply to expedite their return home. The drug-sniffing dogs sniff each participant without detecting anything unusual. However, when it's the turn of the residents, a little girl cries out in fear of the dog. The kind-hearted doctor can't stand this scene and rebukes the security officer, who responds 
responds by punching her in the stomach. This unexpected event shocks everyone. They quickly dress and help the doctor leave the area. The doctor feels pain in her stomach, thinking that the plastic bag inside her might have been ruptured. Hearing this, everyone panics and carries her to the restroom, intending to induce vomiting to expel the powder with water. But a security officer suddenly appears to distribute transit documents. Olga and the YouTuber rush out to handle the situation. The farm owner, seeing the doctor still wailing, fears that the security officer outside might hear. If so, everyone would be in trouble. So she drags the doctor into a stall, covering her mouth to muffle any sound. Tamara at the door is torn between fear and worry. When Olga finally manages to dismiss the security officer and re-enters the restroom, she finds the doctor lying on the floor, not breathing. The farm owner snatches the transit documents and insists Tamara stay quiet. But before she can step out, she is surrounded by the police. Meanwhile, Nikolai and Yana had just returned to the resort. They instantly spotted signs of a gunfight at the entrance, and a strong sense of unease arose within Nikolai. Upon seeing the blood-covered Igor, Nikolai thought this must be a setup by the show. He demanded to know what had happened to the girls. Igor asked if he shouldn't be the one getting help first. Everyone agreed that if Igor died, they would lose their last contact with the showrunners. Andre showed unusual resolve and decided to take little Semyon and Yana to town to find some medicine. Nikolai left Klim behind because Igor was now in critical condition. Nikolai wanted to seize this opportunity to pry more information out of Igor, specifically about who the mastermind behind the show was. Perhaps in his dying moments, Igor would reveal the truth. Igor confessed that after Nikolai's ultimate showdown with Victoria, a mysterious man had stood beside Victoria's body for a long time. The subordinates around him were very respectful, indicating the man must be the mastermind behind the show. Igor could only stand several miles away. He was just a pawn to the show's organizers, disposable at any time. Igor then recounted his experiences joining the show. Five years ago, he was already a successful host. At a business gathering, he was set up by the show advisor. When he woke up, he found that a strange virus had been injected into his body. She told him that this virus was currently incurable and that he could only relieve its symptoms by taking an antidote provided by the show every week. The catch was that Igor had to work for her. Igor cursed at her, but the show advisor threatened him that if he didn't obey, his child would enjoy the same treatment. And so, Igor became the show's host. He believed that the showrunners always knew how to exploit people's weaknesses. Igor advised not to trust anyone easily, as anyone could be a mole arranged by the show. Nikolai was already prepared for this, but for veteran Klim, hearing about such a terrifying organization for the first time sent chills down his spine. He even started to suspect Nikolai's identity. No normal person would suddenly barge into a competition to save a group of strangers. Veteran Klim decided to subdue Nikolai first, then interrogate him thoroughly. Nikolai, of course, would not sit idle. But just as they were at a stalemate, a car honked outside. Nikolai put down his gun and decided to go out to take a look. However, not long after he left, several laser sights were pointed at Klim. From the darkness emerged several figures in full armor. On the other side, Nikolai had just stepped out of the resort, but he was taken aback. Inside a car, he saw a face that he would never forget. It was his beloved Tatiana. But the next moment, he lifted his gun and shot. He had realized that the image of Tatiana was simply a projection on the glass. Nikolai's eyes were sharp as a knife, recognizing this as a provocation and warning from the show organizer. When he returned to the courtyard, he found that Igor had already been taken away. Nikolai collapsed to the ground, feeling helpless. Not long after, the three of them returned with the medicine for Igor, only to find Igor was taken away. Andre suggested that they should seek help from the consulate. Suddenly, a group of armed men appeared at the door. Andre thought it was another setup by the show and declared he wouldn't go anywhere. The next moment, Andre was shot dead by the men, causing the other participants to panic. Even Igri in the control room was somewhat surprised by that. The female assistant, using facial recognition, quickly identified the intruders. They were members of a notorious local gang. It turned out the gang leader's own son had been shot dead by a drug dealer at the entrance of the resort not long ago. Now they were clearly here for revenge. Igri was even more puzzled by this. He had hired the drug dealer for the show, but had not instructed him to kill his own men. He hadn't expected this underling to have such a significant background. Now, Nikolai and the others were in the hands of the local gang. Even if the show's team wanted to intervene, it would require a significant effort. Igri decided to wait and see, believing that Nikolai and the others could handle this crisis on their own. 
He was happy to see Olga and the others were still under his control, but the key players were still in the dark. They had been taken away by the local police on suspicion of murder. The white powder in their stomachs was obviously not going to stay hidden for long. Only after it was regurgitated and tested by the police could they be charged. Subsequently, they were put in a brick and tile room, where a few numb-looking prisoners were already housed. Olga and the others didn't pay them any attention, thinking the most important thing was to figure out if this was a trap set by the show. Just then, a woman dressed in local attire turned around. The instant she saw Olga, she couldn't hold back her tears. It was Tatiana who had unexpectedly appeared here. But as she prepared to say something to Olga, two police officers stormed into the prison, saying they needed to interrogate Olga and the YouTuber. Confused, Tatiana decided to talk to the remaining farm owner and Tamara, but they didn't dare interact with a stranger, demonstrating an aloof attitude. Meanwhile, Olga and the YouTuber had been taken separately into two interrogation rooms. Olga was slightly luckier. The officer interrogating her seemed more amicable, but Olga was on high alert, stating outright that she was ensnared by the show. The officer didn't seem surprised at all and even showed Olga a video of her sister Victoria participating in the show. Fortunately, Olga was prepared and didn't react to the video. She was convinced that this situation was intentionally set up. Otherwise, no one would remain this calm after hearing her ordeal. On the other hand, the YouTuber was not so lucky. She was interrogated by a local officer who had welcomed the participants at the airport. Initially, Levon had thought he was decent, but Levon died too early, and the corrupt officer finally showed his true colors. He deliberately dug up an adult film that the YouTuber had shot with three men before she became famous. She broke down in tears upon seeing it, as she needed money for her mother's treatment at that time. The corrupt officer's eyes were full of mockery. He called three of his men, expressing his wish to shoot a similar film. The YouTuber was pinned to the table, but she resisted, brandishing a pair of scissors as a warning to keep them away or she would end her life. Olga, having just finished her interrogation, heard the commotion and rushed to protect the YouTuber. The officer who interrogated Olga signaled them to leave and gave the corrupt officer a tongue lashing before leaving. Back in the temporary prison, the YouTuber remained engulfed in sorrow. Olga urged her to control her emotions, or else they would fall into the trap. She was prepared in advance, so the officer's verbal provocations didn't affect her. However, the show team knew too many weaknesses of the other participants, and not every one of them could really face it all with calmness. After that, the interrogator pulled out a video of the deceased Masha being publicly violated and claimed it was already posted online. Her mother Tamara was crying in tears. Adding insult to injury, the interrogator gave a close-up on the indifferent Victoria, Olga's twin sister, which made a surge of rage fill her heart. The other participant, the farm owner, was no better off. The interrogator showed CCTV footage of her forcibly killing the female doctor in the bathroom the day before. A single charge of murder could ruin the rest of her life. The woman was cunning, asking the officer what he wanted her to do. He couldn't help but reveal a lewd smile. When the farm owner and the others were returned to prison, she turned on Olga, beating her up and accusing her of being a traitor. She claimed that Olga's survival was due to the help from the show. Apparently, the officer had instructed the farm owner to join forces with Tamara to stir up hatred towards Olga. On the side, Tatiana and the YouTuber wanted to help, but they dared not act rashly without knowing the truth. They could only watch as Olga was choked by the farm owner until she stopped moving. Everyone was stunned into silence, while the farm owner sighed with relief and went to wash her sweat off by the bucket. Suddenly, a pair of hands pushed her head underwater, followed by several blows, quickly ending her life. It turned out that Olga had only pretended to pass out to seize a lethal opportunity. During the interrogation, Olga showed no worry about any punishment due to her killing. She knew it was just for the show. She lifted her hands, constantly looking around to find the CCTV camera. Meanwhile, she recalled her last survival game experience. A few robbers suddenly appeared and shot the show advisor who was disguised as a participant. As everyone was falling apart, the robbers demanded a woman for their pleasure. Elena unkindly recommended Olga, who then suffered the big humiliation of her life under everyone's watchful eyes. The following games were even more brutal. In the end, only Elena and Olga reached the finals. Olga, having the upper hand, decided to forgive this pitiful woman, but was backstabbed at the critical moment. Olga fell into a pool of blood filled with bitterness. She was destined to die, but the show advisor, after receiving a phone call, broke the rules and took
took her back to camp for rescue. Upon waking up, Olga saw a familiar figure and noticed a red string on her wrist. This was something her father had given to her and her twin sister Victoria before he died, thus making Olga think that it was Victoria who had saved her. Thinking of this, Olga immediately showed her red string. Not long after, the two officers seemed to receive an order. Their attitudes dramatically changed, and they gave up interrogating Olga. Late that night, Olga, Tatiana, and several other participants were all herded into a prison van. The police said they were being taken to the nearest prison. Tatiana was sure the show's next round of games was about to start. She remembered how a few months ago, she had just jumped from a plane and had been saved by a group of mysterious people. After recovering from her injuries, she didn't dare to contact her mother and planned to change her name and escape the control of the show. However, through a series of misfortunes, she met a foreign young man who promised to take her to a place where no one knew her. But when they tried to cross the border, she was arrested by the police for smuggling. She spent several months in a temporary prison until Olga and the others showed up. It was then that Tatiana realized she had never escaped the control of the showrunners. With this in mind, she decided to do something. She couldn't let the showrunners lead her by the nose. Before long, the police van really did come to a stop. After Olga and the others got out, they realized this wasn't a prison at all. It was a desolate suburb. The corrupt officer walked out with a heartless stride. He had intentionally brought the female participants here to let his men have a good time. Olga and the others wouldn't sit and wait for death. They picked up iron pipes from the ground and began to resist. Meanwhile, Igri, the mastermind in the control room, began to closely monitor their vital data. Obviously, this was still part of the show's plan. They had even deliberately placed several handy weapons during the day. This gave these weak women the possibility to defeat the police. Suddenly, rapid gunfire sounded. Tamara had picked up a submachine gun. Seeing that the situation was bad, the corrupt officer fled the scene. The intense struggle had pushed Tamara's mental state to the brink. She subconsciously pointed the gun at Olga, blaming her for not saving her daughter Masha in the previous show. The YouTuber stepped forward to help explain for Olga, but was shot down by Tamara. Fortunately, after this incident, Tamara suddenly came to her senses. She pointed the gun at herself and ended her own life. In the control room, the aide hurriedly reported to Igri that Tamara's adrenaline levels had spiked. It seemed like they had been continuously collecting participants' vital signals under various conditions. Olga, who had just had a brush with death, looked up to the sky, not sure whether she was relieved or contemplative. Tatiana and Olga were now the only two surviving female participants. On the other side, Nikolai and the others were attending the funeral in the largest local gang's power base. They insisted that someone else had killed the leader's son and they were just victims caught in the mix. Fortunately, the gang leader had many sons and decided to spare Nikolai and the others for the time being. The condition was that they would help him eliminate his old rival. Nikolai, who had been tricked so many times, was convinced that this was still the show's arrangement. He decided to reverse the strategy and actually found the gang leader's old rival. However, he teamed up with the rival and set a trap to eliminate the gang leader. With the help of the local big shot, Nikolai and the others decided to take the initiative. They quickly traced back to the location where the others had been. Although they were a step too late, they could follow the trail to discover the show's next plan. On the other side, the show's crew member Scarface found the corrupt officer and took out a bag of money to thank him for his cooperation these past days. The show was always generous to cooperative partners, but not so much to those who didn't cooperate. Scarface questioned the drug lord about why he had inexplicably killed the son of the gang leader. The drug lord explained that that man had joined under a false name to usurp his position and that it was his personal matter and had nothing to do with the show. Scarface handed over the cash and turned to leave, but the drug lord raised his gun. However, the one who fell next was the drug lord himself. As it turned out, Scarface had long ago positioned a drone in the vicinity. Back in the car, he didn't forget to mock the show advisor, stating that it was her mistake this time, as the drug lord wasn't suitable for the job. When she returned to the camp to explain her negligence to Igri, he pulled the trigger to end her sexy life immediately. The host, Igor, who had just woken up, was so frightened that he almost fainted. Once he calmed down and mustered his courage, he expressed his desire to leave the show. Unexpectedly, Igri said that Igor's position in the show was extremely important. He then revealed that the so-called survival game was actually a large-scale simulation experiment, reading players' bio-indicators under various emotional changes through chips implanted in their bodies. For instance, although Igor was holding a gun, his adrenaline level hadn't surged, 
gesture, indicating that he didn't intend to kill at the moment. Igri had always had a crazy plan. If he could understand the meaning represented by the biological indicators, he could keep human emotional changes under surveillance, making the entire society incredibly stable. No wonder the show had been doling out money without considering the cost since its establishment, even receiving strong support from some big shots. However, Igor still didn't want to participate in this crazy plan. Naturally, Igri disagreed and planned to use the participants' hatred for Igor to gather everyone once again to collect their data. After saying that, he casually opened a video surveillance feed showing a young man sitting inside. Surprisingly, Igor's son was taken hostage. After finally gaining their freedom, Tatiana and Olga, disguised as travelers, sought shelter in the house of a kind family. But unexpectedly, the corrupt officer suddenly appeared with his men. The two were forced to flee for their shitty lives. During their escape, they jumped onto a train headed out of the state. Meanwhile, with the help of the local big shot, Nikolai and his team finally located the officer who had interrogated Olga. Using the officer's son as leverage, they hoped to uncover Olga's whereabouts. The officer seemed cooperative, but unfortunately he did not have much information. Seeing Nikolai's anxiety, Yana suddenly asked him why he was so concerned about Olga and if it was because he killed her sister. Nikolai was stunned. Besides himself and Olga, only the showrunners knew about this. Undoubtedly, he realized that Yana was a mole planted by the show. After a round of beating, she finally admitted her role. However, her mission was simply to monitor Nikolai's every move. According to the original script, they should all be on a train now. This sparked a thought in Nikolai's mind. Olga and the others were probably on that train. Nikolai and veteran Klim rushed to the train station. Thus, the remaining participants finally reunited on the pre-selected train with Tatiana and Nikolai. But before they could savor the joy of reunion, they encountered the long-lost host, Igor. On the fast-moving train, participants had to escape before the bomb went off. The cabin door was firmly locked and even the window glass was reinforced and bulletproof. Their only way out was to disarm the ticking bomb in front of them. After examining it, veteran Klim discovered that the detonator was fitted with a heartbeat sensor. Random disassembly could likely trigger an early explosion and killing the host in front of them would do no good. All the participants were stunned, in fear of the impending death. Igor reminded everyone not to forget the theme of the game. The only winner is the one who retains their humanity. Tatiana suggested that since they were all going to die, they might as well try killing Igor first. This terrified the host, who hastily revealed his trump card. He knew that Olga wanted to know who saved her during the last game. Igor then told her that it was her father who turned out to be the show moderator Igri. Olga was shocked to hear that, asking Igor not to play with her. She knew her father had been dead for many years, but after the appearance of the red rope last time, she thought it might be possible for her father to come back to life. Nikolai thought all this was irrelevant at the moment and they should focus on finding a way to escape. He told Igor to go to the last carriage. If a blast did occur, everyone hiding in the front might be spared. Igor was terrified, thinking there might still be a chance to save himself. Igri in the monitoring room thought the game wasn't exciting enough. He promptly ordered his assistant to cut the bomb's countdown from an hour to half an hour. This riled the participants. Nikolai instructed Klim and little Semyon to go to the driver's cabin to try to stop the train. This way, even if the bomb exploded, it wouldn't derail. Meanwhile, Tatiana once again raised her gun, insisting that killing Igor was the only way out. But Olga disagreed because she still wanted to know more about her father. Nikolai racked his brain, and in the end, he also aimed his gun at his ex-lover. Because from his experience in the last final, the one who wanted to kill a companion would definitely not be the victor. Olga and Igor echoed this sentiment, arguing that infighting was exactly what the showrunners wanted. The emotions of everyone present were incredibly complex, with a desire to survive, a pursuit of the truth, and fear of the future. Igri in the monitoring room looked satisfied. The biometric values of the players were all within expectations, and he could even predict the actions of several people. Someone was going to die. But surprisingly, Tatiana slowly lowered her gun. Everyone present sighed in relief. Just as Olga was about to ask about her father, Tatiana suddenly pulled the trigger. Looking at Igor's cold body, she realized she had guessed it right. Not only did it not explode, but the countdown also stopped. But Olga showed no joy at surviving the crisis, blaming Tatiana for making her miss the chance to explore the truth. Little did she know Olga's cold-blooded father, Igri, was happily dancing in the monitoring room. 
He was very grateful for Igor's final sacrifice, which allowed him to collect the most comprehensive biological data. But this didn't mean the game was over. At his command, the timer started running again, this time jumping directly to within five minutes. This made all the participants fall into despair, but Nikolai didn't want to give up. He dragged Igor's body towards the rear of the train. Seeing that Olga insisted on following, he closed the aisle gate directly. Even if the bomb finally exploded, the others at the head of the train would have a high chance of survival. Coincidentally, veteran Klim, who was at the head of the train, found a shortcut to the driver's cabin, where there was a lever that should let the train detach from the head. He told little Semyon to go inform the others, while he tried to sneak into the driver's cabin. But when Klim successfully reached the driver's cabin, he didn't open the door to let the others in, but pushed the lever down, detaching the carriage from the train head. Obviously, he hadn't forgotten that this was a competition, and the winner would get a million-dollar prize. Despite being abandoned, Olga comforted her companions not to panic. If the explosion caused the train to derail, they could just jump down. Maybe they could survive. At this time, there were only two minutes left until the explosion. Nikolai exerted all his strength to drag Igor to the last carriage, but with only 20 seconds left, he had lost the chance to escape and could only sit and wait for the explosion. Meanwhile, veteran Klim, who thought he had escaped danger in the train head, heard a noise coming from the deck. When he opened it, he saw Yana tied to the bomb. Then, the next moment, a violent explosion sounded and the train head burst into flames. Nikolai, who was expecting death at the train's tail, was surprisingly unharmed. This made him once again feel the joy of surviving a catastrophe. It turned out everything was within the calculations of the showrunners, and only by maintaining humanity could one get a chance to survive. Even Igri in the control room couldn't stop praising Nikolai's performance. When the train gradually stopped, Olga and the others couldn't wait to jump down from the car. Unexpectedly, four people survived this round of the game. Suddenly, a car drove up from the distant highway. Nikolai signaled everyone to relax. The newcomers were his allies. The town sheriff and Edouard, who had not made an appearance these past few days, had been busy nonetheless. It's revealed that after copying the footage from the last competition, they tracked the location of the showrunners based on the participants' chips. Edouard was familiar with their patterns and knew that there was a man in a hat who handled the aftermath. Sure enough, shortly after the deaths of Lena and others, the man in the hat arrived at the scene of the accident to extract chips from their necks. These chips stored important information that should not fall into the wrong hands. The two men did not intervene, but quietly followed the man in the hat to a camp located in the desert. Undoubtedly, this was the location of the show's base. The sheriff and Edward chose not to alert them, deciding to regroup with Nikolai before taking them all down. However, before that, they did something extraordinary. According to the location of Olga and others, Edward located Scarface, who was monitoring them from a short distance away. They used a minor trick to make this crew member vanish into thin air. The man in the hat, who was responsible for collecting chips and handling the aftermath, was naturally not spared and possibly sent to meet Jesus. With the help of Edward's tech skills, Nikolai and his team were brimming with confidence, vowing to capture the despicable production team. Meanwhile, Igri in the control room realized something was wrong. All the participants' chip signals had disappeared, and even the surveillance screens were occupied by static. Igri immediately thought of Edward. Only he could have accomplished all this without their knowledge. Before long, Nikolai and his team arrived at the show's base, only to find it had been evacuated. They searched room by room, eventually reaching a control room filled with screens. As they flickered, they began to play recorded videos. These were the last words left by the participants from the previous season. Little Semyon saw his grandfather Semyon, who expressed his love for him. Then the scene shifted to Olga's sister, Victoria. It turned out she had suspected their father Igri was still alive and wanted to confirm it before telling Olga. Unfortunately, she never got a chance to see her sister one last time. Hearing this, Olga was already in tears. Little Semyon suddenly realized that the show crew knew they were here. Suddenly, a voice was heard outside the tent. Olga couldn't wait and ran out, unable to believe her eyes at the sight of the familiar yet strange face. Her father, Igri, remained calm, saying that nothing was too great a sacrifice to ensure the smooth progress of the emotional experiment. He even thanked his daughters for providing invaluable experimental data. The next moment, a dozen drones took off. Nikolai and his team fell to the ground due to the fog emitted by the drones. Only Olga and her father stood still. Apparently, Igri had already injected himself and his daughter with an antidote. With no outsiders left, the old father finally confessed his intentions, saying that he had done all this for Olga. 
If the experiment were successful, Olga would inherit his control over all of humanity. But Olga was not grateful. Was this his excuse for watching her and Victoria suffer so much? Igri said he didn't regret it because Victoria had made the wrong choice. She failed to maintain her humanity, so death was the only way. But Olga hated her father's cold-bloodedness. She pulled out a gun, ready to finish off this demon. But the next moment, a piercing low-frequency noise sounded, causing Olga and Igri to feel a pain in the back of their necks, and then both fainted. Nikolai, who had been unconscious, suddenly stood up and coldly said, Let the game continue. The final twist possibly indicates that Igri was not the ultimate puppet master of the show, and Nikolai was sent into the play to monitor the whole show and guide its progress. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.